I am British. 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 Why am I nervous? Is anyone else nervous? <laughs> I'm nervous too. I'm actually a dual citizen, uh, US and UK. I um, grew up in England, in London, and I moved to America when I was 12. So you'll hear I have a bit of a like funky accent. I'm not a dual citizen, I'm a citizen of the UK, but I also moved when I was 12. And oh, okay. my accent, for the most part, I think I still sound kind of British. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm a citizen of the UK. Oh, I spent about four years in India, so I got a bit of that as well. And I moved to the US two years ago for UCLA, so I'm a student right now. I'm also a citizen of the UK. I moved to the US two months ago. Um, I lived in Canada before that for four years, which was horrible because I hate the cold. Um, <laughs> I've lived here for 11 years. I'm from Liverpool. Um, um, yeah, I've been here a long time, so my accent kind of sounds muddled. I'm a Scouser. Scouse? I'm also a dual citizen. Um, I moved here when I was 12. Uh, well, I got my dual citizenship when I was 12. Lots of people got their dual citizenships at 12. I'm Suspicious. <laughs> I've got eyes on you. Not very <laughs> I said it first. That's true, that's true. You're from London. Where in the UK are you from? Yeah, London. London. Yeah, yeah. Leicester. Liverpool. Liverpool. Where are you from? London. The UK? Oh, London. I'm from Manchester. What part oh. of London? Peckham. No way. Okay, I'm from Upper Norwood. Yeah. Where West. specifically in West. London? West. Okay. Yeah. I'm from Leicester and Wigston. Oh, okay, nice. Where in Liverpool? I studied there. Um, I was I was born in uh, West Derby. Okay. Mm. Wigston, that's right near uh, Oldby. Yes. Market so. Harbour. Market Harbour. Sounds familiar. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I grew up in a very small bubble. <laughs> I mean, my parents would take me everywhere, um, and I grew up in India for like 14 to 18 and then go back to the UK, finish up my school there. And How long in. were you in Leicester for? I went from zero to 14, I was born in Leicester. Yeah. That's cool. I feel like someone from Leicester would have automatically known where Market Harbour is. I'm from Manchester and I know where Market Harbour is. It's a tiny little town. I don't know a lot about English geography because I was so in my own world. And yeah, my parents would take me around everywhere. So it, his story was convincing to me because that's similar to my story. What were you guys' first impressions of America? Really Big. overwhelmed. Big, right? <laughs> Big. It's like, like huge oh portions with their food. Like every <laughs> plate is like Their medium-sized so pizza is our large size. Yeah. Ice pizza, yeah. overwhelmed. The Imperial system. Imperial. Uh, yes. F***ing horrible. Yes. Well, I've been here for two months, I'm still trying to get used to Fahrenheit. It's really yeah. stressing yeah. me out. Mm. The, the temperature is one, <laughs> things like that, you know? And like, I work off a 24 hour clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I still got that, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think tipping culture is pretty bad. Oh, everything tipping here, cultures. Everything, whatever the price is, oh, it's a, like at least three dollars. So we can stay in this conversation for ages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of questions, like people assume because you're British, you like something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when One Direction was big, they're like, you're British, you like One Direction. I was yeah, like, I <laughs> have heard maybe two of their songs. Or like Harry Potter, Hot Take, I haven't seen all of the movies. I've only seen like two. You're joking. I'm <laughs> sorry, I know. That's like the peak British thing and I haven't done it. Well, like the first thing they say is like, talk about tea or water. Yeah, and right. Tea or water. Oh, yeah. Water. <laughs> they always say, say water. Or like, pip pip cheerio. Yeah. Like, sorry, no one says that. His story at first kind of seemed like he was just making something up. You're the worst British accent I've heard ever. I'm, I'm so convinced, Tim. Because he didn't know his geography. Oh. I, I was just shocked. I was a bit sheltered, but so I didn't know my geography very well. But I was wondering when they're going to get Michael out. That was surprising. Yeah, he sounded very really British. <laughs> I think it's a joke. I think everyone's British. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when, when I meet people, they always say, oh, you're from London. They automatically like, yeah, assume yeah. everyone's from London. I'm yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm from Liverpool. They're yeah. like, Oh, the Beatles, and they mentioned the Beatles, but <laughs> the UK is so big, like they just think it's just Which London. It's funny because I feel like a fake when I say I'm from London, because it's like, oh, of course you're from London. I spoke to someone that thought London was the country. England is my city. One time oh. someone asked me, are you from England or Britain? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's because Americans don't know <laughs> geography at all. I will say, <laughs> since living here, I have felt my just general world knowledge declining as I go through the <laughs> education system. I don't know anything about anywhere anymore. For me, since I moved when I was 12, which is uh, seventh grade here in the States. She mentioned um, seventh grade, and usually we say year seven or year eight or year nine, and it just threw me off. 
the biggest change I noticed was how students address their teachers. Oh. Like it's very informal, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think growing up in England, like you would never question your teacher, you know? Or like, I feel like the parents have that kind of... What school did you go to? Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because obviously growing up in England, um, you wear uniforms all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was lavender in the summertime with white socks. Yeah, you have a winter and, and summer uniform. And winter, summer uniform yeah. and a PE uniform that changes mm -hmm. based on the, mm -hmm. the season What school did too. you go to? <laughs> <laughs> high school, shout out. Although thinking yeah. about it, like I feel like I'm so glad that we had a uniform in school oh, because yeah. Yeah. the poor fashion choices I made at 13, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, so, so glad I didn't have to go to school dressed like that. No, genuinely, I look back at my Facebook photos <laughs> and want to disassociate from the weather. <laughs> that goal was, it wasn't me. Hey good humans, it's Timmy here. And Maddie. Ugh, I'm a sucker for a good British accent. Do you think you've sniffed out the mole yet? Honestly, I'm not sure. All I've been smelling are these sweet, sweet fragrances I got from Scentbird. What's that? Wait, you've never heard of Scentbird? Well, Scentbird is actually the sponsor of this portion of the video. Scentbird is reimagining everything about how people discover, shop for, purchase, and even experience fragrances. They let you try new designer fragrance every month for just $17. And every month you get to pick what you want to receive, so there aren't any surprises. Here, try this. Scentbird has a huge selection of perfumes, colognes, and unisex options. And with each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply so you can try out fragrances before committing to a full-size bottle, which can easily cost over $150. This month, I received memoirs, Wish You Were Here, and I love it because the notes of summer rain, toasted almonds, and fresh ground coffee just give me the cozy vibes of chilling in a cafe on a rainy summer day. So good. This is Throne from English Laundry. It has both floral and fruity notes, and you know how much I love my fruity notes. But it also has that mask vibe that you get with a lot of cologne. Oh my god, I love that. My boyfriend's getting that one for sure. Um, excuse me, I'm keeping this one for myself. No, no, no. You can actually use the coupon code Jubilee55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. It's just a little over $8 for your first month, available in the USA and Canada. Be sure to check out the links in the description for all the scents we received this month. Thanks so much to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the episode. She was a little bit quieter than the rest of the group. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> you guys did good. You guys did good. I think I said grade seven. There are words that I say in the American way now. Raise your hand if you think the mole is still in the box and you'd wish to continue the game. All right, majority rules. That means we move on to round three. So you guys still think the mole's in the box right now? 100%. Who? Who well, do you think I it is? No <laughs> these two. I who, do you, who do you think it is? Well, we can't tell you know right now, can we? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you guys were all British. Like, I really was ready to Honestly, ready to win. starting to pick up on some uh, accent glitches. I'm just a really suspicious person, generally. OK. So. <laughs> if you had to pick one item from a supermarket, what was it like your favorite item from that store? So chocolate fingers. <gasps> Hey, this is a really random thing to say, but the meal deal, the Tesco meal oh deal. Oh my God, yes. They're, they're always the best. I, ironically, there were these, it came in a yellow package. It was like an American pancake. It was so good, you put it in the toaster. And I put it in yeah. the toaster all the time. It was really tasty. It was just a generic, I think it might have been. I don't know that one. <laughs> but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't something notable. What would you get? The prawn cocktail sandwich, <gasps> definitely. Oh, no, I like this crisp, the prawn yeah, cocktail yeah. crisp. I think, I think the crisps I miss the most are Monster Munch and Quavers. I was gonna say Quavers, I was gonna say Quavers. What's it? Crinkle cut what? cheesy what's it? No, I don't think with what's it. No? <laughs> no. I mean, what about discos? Do you guys like discos? What's a disco? Yeah, so you know, discos the crisps? Yeah. They have like a bunch of flavors, They're salt like vinegar, old ones, barbecue. Man. Here or UK? UK. UK. Oh, no. no They're not no, here no, at all. No. He didn't know what discos were. I mean, okay, well, he can't be British. <laughs> My initial suspicions. Michael. What? I don't know. <laughs> Just out of everybody. It's probably my accent. Like no, I'm from not Liverpool. even the accent. I think also too. You were yeah. the only one who didn't raise your hand. And I really thought that because <laughs> I, mean, I thought not you guys were good. Oh, I, I was like, okay, these are my fellow Brits right and here. And then you said I thought you all were British. There were just some things. No one has like. that much British camaraderie. I'm not saying it is you. Okay. I'm just saying out of everyone who it could have been in my mind. Okay. It was closer to being you. Okay. I'd rather not say. So now you look suspicious. <laughs> nah. I don't trust anyone. You could all be lying to me. <laughs> if it's any, I mean, I don't know if this is cheating, but I literally have a tattoo on my body of my postcode. And we're going. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. He didn't know what disco chips were. You mother 
Yeah. Okay, you wait, know. I'm surprised. He knows, I, you know. I'm really bitter about being voted out. Just because somebody doesn't know the same snack as you does not mean that their nationality should be questioned. If you think the mole is still in the box and you'd like to continue the game, raise your hand. But, oh God. <laughs> uh, I still feel she might be the mole. Really? <laughs> mm hmm. I'm really like. <sighs> I mean, I guess. Continue. Okay, so you got your dual citizenship when you were 12. Did you move with your family? And where did you move to? I got sponsored by my auntie. Sponsored? Yeah, we got sponsored from when we were really young, so pretty much when we were born. By the time it came through, that was a waiting list back then. So wow. it, we came through when we were 12. When we were kids, we used to come every year. My mum wanted us to move, you know, or have the option when we're older to be able to go back and forth, you know. I've been here for 11 years. I came in 2012 and I originally came over to see my sister. She lives in North Carolina. She has her own little deli, so I was helping her out. And then in 2014, I moved to LA and I've been here since. Yeah. Your turn. Okay, yeah. I know I, you guys are like ganging up on me. <laughs> no, so no, no. My dad works at an IT company mm -hmm. and so they asked if he could be the manager in LA and we all moved and we've been here for 12 years. Okay. Went to school here. You said you go to UCLA, yeah? I go to UCLA. I'm studying linguistic anthropology, minoring in French. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> linguistic anthropology. Linguistic, yeah. Do you know a lot about football? No. Like, do you know any of the teams in the Premier League? Well, okay. I never got also? into football okay. really when I was there. I only supported the teams that my friends. Which ones? What teams? So, Ch obviously, Chelsea, mm -hmm. Arsenal, Man U were like the main ones. Mm -hmm. I don't watch sports in general, really. Okay. Um, if a game's on, if the World Cup's on, obviously, You'll watch it. England all the way. But mm. in general... I don't really watch too much football, but if you grow up in England... You'll, you'll know about the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Gosh, this is hard. I had a feeling. Guys are wrong. I think they'd made a pact. <laughs> and I was just the only one not in that pact. Do you feel confident in your choice? I do. Definitely. You're not the mole, are you? <laughs> no. Okay, good. If the lights turn green, that means that you have voted the mole out and you both win. If the lights turn red, that means the mole is still in the box and you lose. So. <laughs> if you did, you did a good job. No, I'm, I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, nothing to worry about. Three, two, one. Will the mole reveal themselves in three, two, one? Oh, I knew it. Are I you kidding me? Gosh, that was my first pick, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I got it from the get-go. You knew it was Tejas and you continued to play. <laughs> I told you it's all about the De Niro's, yo. I, I studied, but not, not the geography. I was looking at the map, but I didn't recognize uh, all the places. And I could always do somewhat of a British accent, uh, or at least I thought I could. And then I just Googled, like, where's the most amount of brown people from, from England? And I was like, Leicester, Leicester it is. Your accent was really good. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking, yeah. I, I had some, somewhat of a plan, but not knowing geography is pretty American, so I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flabbergasted. <laughs> Dumbstruck. <laughs> Bewildered. He probably sounded more British than me. I, I guess I have a joke. I'm not sure it's very funny. Uh, but what would you call my leaving the box in the first round? Brexit. <laughs> Sorry, that was all. That was all I could think about when I left. I was like, oh my god, this is yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> There's some more in there, yo. <laughs>